Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We are so glad that you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. And I say, stick around. We're going to have us a good time around the Word. And I have a, a hungry studio audience here. We're all hungry for what God has for us today. So we invite you, get your Bible, get a notepad, get a pencil pa uh, pen or some device maybe that you want to take notes on, but take notes. Yes. Um, we want you to release your faith today. You know, it's not just about hearing the word, but it's mixing faith yes. with the word that we hear. So expect something today. Yes. Amen. Anytime you're watching or listening to the word being preached, always expect something. And listen, we should never come away from the word unchanged. Amen. We should always be changed. That means we're listening and we're taking that word and we're doers of that word. Why? Because the word says we are changed from glory to glory. So really on the other side of change is more glory. We welcome change. We embrace change. How about something changing in our thought life? How about something changing in the way we say things or what we're saying? Or what about this? Something changing in what we're doing, that we're acting more and more on the Word. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So expect something today. Yes. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 20, I want us to start there today. We're going to uh, minister along the lines of faith and healing, of oh, course, and that's, that's what God has um, assigned us to do. That's our part. Amen. And so we're going to look at Matthew chapter 20 and verse 30. It's speaking about a, a healing that happened under Jesus' earthly ministry. And it reads, And behold, two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have pity and mercy on us, you son of David. So notice this, and I believe this is the Amplified Classic. So you may want to pull that up if you want to follow along with us exactly on that. But listen to this, that they, it says they cried out. We're not talking about an emotional crying of desperation, but it's a, it's a call of expectation. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're not a desperate people no, that we're, uh, you know, clamoring in desperation and anxiety for God. Hurry up and intervene. Amen. No, but they cried out because they expected something. Oh. Yes. They wanted that expectation to be heard yes. and they wanted it met. Amen. So it says they cried out and notice what they said. Now they're blind, but they didn't call out in this wording for healing. They said, have pity, have mercy on us. Um, healing is a flow of the mercy of God. Amen. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And notice what the word also tells us is that uh, God's mercies, they're new every morning. Meaning this, we never get to the end of his mercies. Amen. There's so much mercy from God that one day can't hold it all. <laughs> Every day there's a fresh supply of mercy. Yes. So know this, I don't care how much the devil would try to accuse you of, oh, you messed up this and you messed up that so much. Just know this, at 12.01 midnight, yeah. that one minute after, oh, a fresh supply of mercies. <laughs> Not that we want to bank on spending every yeah. bit of mercy, but... When it comes to healing mercies, we want to take it all. Oh, yeah. When you need healing, take all the mercy yes. that will work your healing. Amen. Yes. So they cried out, have pity, have mercy on us, you son of David. So notice this, they, they, they called him Messiah. Yep. Mm -hmm. They knew he was the one that was sent. You know, it matters what you believe when you call. Oh, 
It matters what you're believing when you're calling. Some people call on the name of the Lord or some people call for him to do something, but they're not sure what he'll do. They're, they're hoping maybe that God will just uh, do something apart from them expecting anything. But, you know, uh, God can only do exactly what we call for him to do and expect him to do. Why? Because the power of God meets faith. But we have to have faith for something. Amen. Uh, growing up, we never heard that Jesus was a healer, so we never called him healer. We didn't expect healing in a divine flow because we didn't know. But the more you know, the more you call. Oh, Amen. Yeah. That's true. That's good. Amen. Yeah. So they knew he was the Messiah. They called him that, didn't they? Verse 31 says, the crowds reproved them and told them to keep still. Well, you know, I would say this. These are two blind men. They're by the roadside. But look at verse 31. The crowds reproved them. Uh, they weren't the ones blind. You know, to take the hope out of someone when you're not in their situation is inappropriate. Amen. And so it's easy for someone who doesn't have your need to not have the same expectation you have. But the crowds reproved them and told them to keep still. And I love how they responded. They cried out all the more, Lord, have pity and mercy on us, son of David. So they just got louder about it. Amen. Amen. In verse 32, it says, And Jesus stopped and called them. See, their cry stopped Jesus. The crowd's instruction to the blind men wouldn't have stopped Jesus. And it didn't stop the blind men either. <laughs> but notice Jesus stopped and called them and asked. And I want you to see this. I want you to see this statement, that this question really, that Jesus gave to these blind men. What do you want me to do for you? I love that. What do you want me to do for you? Meaning Jesus didn't come to them and say, I'll tell you what I'll do for you. No, he let them write the ticket. He didn't come to them with any kind of limitations in what he was able to do for them. So when he says, what do you want me to do for you? He's letting them define what they receive. Right. Right. We are the ones that choose what we receive, not God. That's right. Right. Amen. Yeah. What do you want me to do for you? Uh, they answered him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. Now people would say, well, you could tell that they were blind. Why would Jesus ask a question like that? It's because he's wanting to know what are you expecting? It's not what are your needs? What are you expecting? Because many people have needs, but don't, they don't get answers to their needs because they're not expecting anything. Faith has to be attached. When you have a need, attach your faith to what God, God will do regarding that need. Be specific over every need in your life. Don't just be general and say, God, just bless me. Well, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you're born again, the blessing of God is upon you. But don't be general. Be specific on what you expect that blessing to accomplish in your life. Faith is specific. Yes. If we just generally believe, we generally receive nothing. Uh -huh. right. But if we're specific and we know what God will do, uh -huh. then that is, that is a faith that God will always meet. Praise Amen. Yes. So he asked them, what do you want me to do for you? He invited them to be specific. Uh -huh. I love, I love the testimony of one minister that he lived in a foreign country and uh, it was so heav heavily populated where he lived. And the best way for him to get around was not with a car, not with a, that kind of a vehicle because the traffic was so, uh, so jammed up that to get around was a difficulty in a car that he wanted a bicycle because he could weave in and out and he could get around quickly. And so he began hearing, he had started a church and he began hearing the faith message taught, the word of faith being taught. Um, he had started his church before he had ever heard that message. But when he heard that message, he recognized what the word was teaching him. And so he began releasing his faith for a bicycle. So he prayed and he said, God, I pray according to the word 
You said you shall have whatsoever you ask. I pray. I'm asking. I'm saying, I'm asking you for a bicycle. And he said a month went by, two months went by, three months went by, and he went back to God about it. And he says, God, he said three months ago, I prayed and asked you to give me a bicycle. And he said, I believe your word works, that when you ask, you receive. Amen. And he said, and I want to know, where's my bicycle? And God answered him and said, you never told me what kind you wanted. What was God doing? He was asking him, be specific. Now, see, we think that if we're more specific, it makes it harder for God. It makes it easier. It causes your answer to show up quicker because faith needs to be specific and not general. Let me ask you this with your children. If you say, uh, you and you and your spouse are going to leave for the evening, go out and your kids are old enough to stay by themselves at home. And you say, when I get home, this house better look different than it did when I left. Uh-huh. Well, it might look different, <laughs> but let's say just the area on the couch, maybe they, they knew what you meant. They mean, they knew clean up. But you just said it better look different. Well, let's just clean off the couch. That'll look different. (laughs) Uh The parent comes home and is mighty disappointed because the whole room looks like a mess. Their bedroom still looks like a mess. The kitchen looks like a mess. And you said, you just said it needs to be different. It's different. (laughs) If you want, if you want real results, you have to be specific, to be fair, to be fair as a parent, to be fair, be specific. Uh, if you want a faith that works, be specific, be specific. And, uh, so, uh, when this minister said, God, where's my, that bicycle? And he said, well, you never told me what kind you wanted. He said, I want a Schwinn bicycle and I want it red. And, uh, he said within a week, within a week, a red Schwinn bicycle was given to him, red. Now, see, we would think by, by d- d- you know, saying what make a bicycle, who the maker is, or the color, we're saying, well, now we're getting so specific, it's going to delay it when it really accelerates it. Yeah. Being, yes. being vague delayed it. Wow. Being specific accelerated it. I, uh, I've heard the, I've, and read the account of several really giants in the faith who were known for healing and miracle ministries. And I can, I remember two specifically that I read that um, a parent would bring up one of their children, a baby. Uh, One was born blind. One was born without eyeballs in the sockets. The eyelids were just closed, almost sealed closed, like it never developed and there were no eyeballs in that socket. And so the, the, the eyelid was caved in rather than being rounded out. And uh, when they prayed, because the first one of the accounts, they were blind. And so the, the color of the eye was milky. It never had a, a proper color. And so when they brought these children to these ministers to pray for, they, the minister would say, what color of eyes do you want? Oh, wow. Why? Specific. Specific. We're not just believing for sight. We're believing for the eyes to be whole. Yes. Well, if they're going to be whole, what color do you want? Yes. I heard just recently, and I'd heard it years ago and forgotten about it, and I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't even remember what minister, but it was in a foreign country. And this man came up that he never, his, his height never grew. There was, it wasn't just that he was short in stature. It was, there was an underdevelopment of something and, and his body just was proportionately wrong. And so there was just something wrong in the chromosomes or whatever part of the body that determines that. And so he came up to the minister and he said to him, he, because he was obviously something was impaired in that growth process. And he said, what do you want? And he said, I want to be taller. And I love the, what the minister said, how tall? How tall? Now the minister himself was about six foot. 
this this man, I don't know, but I'm talking significantly, maybe a, maybe somewhere four feet, not quite even five feet. And he said, I want to be five foot ten. Well, the minister knew about in relation to his own height where that would sit. So the minister standing on the platform just held out his hand to the five foot ten height and said, we thank you, Father, that he grows to this height. And the whole congregation watched his body just move up to that height. Specifics. The specifics of God's power will meet the specifics of your faith. Amen. Amen. So when Jesus is asking them, what do you want me to do for you? He's asking you for specifics. Get specific. Amen. Amen. Father, I'm just believing you for a job. Well, what kind of a job? What field do you want? What kind of income do you need? And I could say this, uh, you have to be sober about the strength of your faith. Well, I'm believing for a $2 million job. Well, Have you believed for a $30,000 job? Have you believed for a 50? See, at first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. What's he meaning? That our faith development is a process. Don't try to skip over processes just because you're living in la-la land somewhere. Be sober about the process of faith. Have successes all along the way. Amen. So when you say, God, I'm believing for a job, it needs to be something within what the strength of your faith can lay hold of. Don't be, don't be, if I could say this, uh, unreasonable and unsound in a request in your specifics. Be sober about what your faith can receive. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Know, know this, that Jesus doesn't come to you with what him deciding. You decide. He's already told us and provided the best, the highest, all we'll ever need. But it's up to our faith to receive in in any kind of measure what it is he's provided for us. But I love the totality of this question. What do you want me to do for you? There are no limits. It's a totally blank check. What do you want me to do for you? Mm. He puts himself at our command. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 That's what he was doing to these men, uh-huh. these blind men. What do you want me to do for you? When you're faced with a need, go back to that question. Oh, Amen. Mm. That he's still, he's unchanging and he's still saying, what do you want me to do for uh-huh. you? Yes. What do you want me to do for you? Yes. Voice it. Yes. Well, the Lord knows in my heart. Well, good for, the, good for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you be that, you be that nondescript, mm-hmm. not callings. Because mm-hmm. see, faith has to be released. Yes. Yes. It does. That's right. It's not just about what's in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's about what you say about what's in your yes. heart. Yes. Right. What's it tell us in Romans that if you will, if you'll believe in your heart and yeah. confess with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. You'll, you'll confess unto salvation. So he's showing us it's not enough that faith is in our heart. It has to be in our mouth. Why? Because faith that's in your heart is faith that hasn't yet been released. So it's not enough to say, well, in my heart, he knows what I want. He invites you to more than that. And this verse shows us, what do you want? What do you want? It's not what can he do? What do you want? Because there's nothing he can't do so far as meeting your need. He's limitless in his ability to meet your need. But what do you want? And sometimes religion will balk at this and say, well, God knows everything. He, I would never presume to tell God. This is what Jesus did. He invited, he invited them. Be specific. What do you want me to do? Don't be religious. Be faith. Amen. Have faith words, not religious thoughts. Have faith words. You're a co-laborer with God. You know, if you're a co-owner in a business with somebody, that means you have a voice in it. Well, we're co-laborers with God. That means we have a voice in the labor that he works in our lives and in the lives of others. We have a voice. We have input. Uh 
into that. Wow. And that's what Jesus is asking. What, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do for you? Don't ever forget that. That's always spendable. That's his posture toward our need. What do you want me to do for you? Amen. And it says, they answered him, Lord, we want our eyes to be open. And Jesus in pity touched their eyes and instantly they received their sight. Look at this, and followed him. It matters where you go after you've received something from God. You can't go back to living the ways of the world and think that you're going to hold fast to what you've received from God because the devil's always looking for the opportunity to rob from you. And it's strong faith that is able to, re- to hold fast. Uh-huh. So where you go after you receive your miracle, after you receive your healing is going to determine how strong your faith becomes. Right. You go and you, what's that mean? That means go to church, yeah. sit under the teaching of the word, yeah. go into times of fellowship with yeah. God, be with him because yes. in that setting, faith comes and faith is fortified as you become a doer of the word. Yes. But these men did, didn't turn around and say, oh good, now I can go uh, you know, hang out with the guys and go wherever I want now that I can see. No, they took what they received and they used it in his direction. Oh, yeah. They followed him. Yes. They didn't go back to a carnal worldly direction yes. with their life. Yes. It, you know, when we receive and when we're believing God for healing and when we're receiving our healing from God, what that does, it elevates the life. Yes. Yeah. 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 That we, we say, wait a minute, mm-hmm. with, with me believing God, it puts a demand on me to separate from that which would yes. rob me from yes. my miracle, Amen. rob yes. me from yes. healing. Yes. Yes. Carnal flows, mm-hmm. the way of the world, yes. conversations yes. that are yes. inappropriate. Yeah. You begin to cut away the things yes. that won't help you receive your miracle. Amen. And that's a privilege to get to do that, to separate ourselves. And it's not God separating us. We're to separate. He has separated us in the sense he's made us his. But now we're to make choices in life so that his power can flow unhindered without the flow of the world or carnality robbing from us. Amen. So he said, what do you want me to do for you? And I make this statement, and this really depicts that statement, is that, and that is God goes where faith puts him. Amen. God goes where faith puts him. People think, well, I'm just going to leave it all up to God. Well, I don't, you know, people will say, well, I just leave my children to God. You can't do that. God gave you those children. They're from him. God gave you those children. And he expects us to take our parental authority and do the right thing with those children. Well, even so, God has given us the blessings of heaven. God has given us uh, a covenant of healing, a covenant of prosperity. Now, what are we going to do with that? If you see parents who say, well, I've just left my children to God, uh, in your your thought life, Mm -hmm. so that you don't worry, that's appropriate, but not in the actual training of a child. The Bible says train up a child the way he should Uh go. That doesn't say turn him over to God. God's not going to train him. He's left you to train him. Well, even so, God's left our covenant to us. He'll fulfill the covenant, but we get to draw on as much of that covenant as as measured by us, how much we draw on that covenant. Amen. Amen. It all belongs to us. Uh but we'll only enjoy the part that we draw on. Amen. 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 So God goes where faith puts him. Amen. Amen. When you see something is in the covenant Mm -hmm. and it belongs to you, you can put a demand on that flow of that covenant and God will fulfill it. He doesn't have to initiate it. He already initiated by making a covenant. Amen. Amen. So now we're just taking him up on that. Uh Amen. Amen. So we have to realize and get past wrong thinking that says, well, if God wants it for me, he'll give it to me. Um, He can only bring to us what we believe him for. No one even got saved unless we received it. Right? Right? You had to receive salvation. You had to receive the price Jesus paid to become a child of God. Um, so we don't ever want to fall into this thinking of if God has it for me, it'll show up. We can look at the life of so many Christians and see what didn't show up for them, but God had it for them all along. 
Um, Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, I believe it says, is that um, God is speaking in, the, in this verse and he says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. My people, not the devil's people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh, notice he didn't say we're destroyed because God didn't show up for us. Right. See, people are waiting for God to show up and do something for us. No, it's lack of knowledge of what he already made ours. And it's a lack of knowledge to say, well, I'm just waiting. Whatever God wants, he'll do it. No, it's whatever we call, whatever we believe for, whatever we're specific about. He has to know what are you attaching your faith to? Because why? His power can only meet faith. Amen. Amen. And so this is what Jesus is reminding and showing in these men is he's letting us know, be specific. He puts himself at our disposal. Think of that. The king of heaven putting himself at our disposal. Hallelujah. Don't ask small. Don't ask small. Amen. Ask everything in line with the covenant. Well, right now I can sense that healing power flowing. Why? Because he offers everyone, what do you want me to do for you? Amen. Amen. So right now we're going to answer that question. (laughs) We're not just going to leave that question unanswered. We're going to say, we know what we want him to do for us. Amen. So we invite you, release your faith right now. Jesus, we thank you. We take you at your word. You ask this divine question, what do you want me to do for you? So Jesus, we take you at your word. We we believe you for healing. You're the healer. You're the miracle worker. So I speak to everybody who has pain in their body, symptoms, disease, sickness. Satan, you take your hand off their body. And Jesus, we thank you for healing power. We take it. That's what we believe for. That's what we receive with our faith. And we join our faith to those that are watching. And right where you're at, you say, I receive it. With your own mouth, with your own words, you have to say, Jesus asked a question and they needed to answer it. So right now you answer and you say, I receive Receive the healing power of God into my body in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then say, I thank you for it. I take it. I take it. Hallelujah. Well, it's been a pleasure and a joy to be with you today. Don't miss it tomorrow. We're going to have, we're going to do some more along this line. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. On this CD, Confessions of Healing, Nancy Dufresne begins to lead in confessions for healing from the scriptures, allowing time for the listener to repeat them after her. Order today at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Paducah, Kentucky. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. Every one of us have a job to do in the body of Christ. It's a new day of stepping into places in the Spirit that will bring us into a greater flow. They come for anything else but to help people. A fresh momentum that hits a stride. What is the job of the body of Christ? It's to set people free, get people healed, get people saved. Can you say amen? Hitting a stride in the spirit realm, in healing, and in gifts of healings. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, President of Dufresne Ministries. I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. 
The vision of Dufresne Ministries is to move with the Word and the Spirit as we bring the message of faith and God's healing power to this generation. Partnership is a two-way street. We commit to bring the uncompromised Word of God to you, and you can, by faith, become a partaker of the grace upon this ministry. Then our partners bring their prayer and support. If you receive from this ministry and have been blessed by it, please pray about becoming a partner today. God bless you. Some of the arms of the ministry that you'll support include a traveling ministry with crusades and conferences held nationwide and abroad, the printing and publishing of books, CDs, and DVDs to get this message out, Fresh Oil Fellowship, a ministerial organization for the encouragement of five-fold ministers who desire to flow with the Word and the Spirit, TV and other media broadcasts, that reach various parts of the world. Our Jesus the Healer television broadcast is currently on six different networks, potentially reaching 329 million households. Benefits you receive from partnership include a 20% discount on all Dufresne Ministries products, a monthly partner letter from Nancy Dufresne, consistent ministry updates and communication, and the prayer of agreement with our partners. Be a part in carrying out the vision. Pray about becoming a legacy partner today. For more information, go to our website at defrainministries.org.